Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Wake and Jake as me and David are joined by underwear model Eno Saris. Uh, Eno, how are you, man? <laughs> My balls are being lovingly cupped right now. <laughs> Can we talk about that a little bit? You're doing underwear ads with Pudge Rodriguez? <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> it was pretty funny. The, uh, the, uh, the story that I've got is that, so, so while we're doing these underwear uh, things like I get there and the production assistant's like, well, here's a modesty cup and a modesty <laughs> cup for anyone who's never worn one is like, um, it's like a bra, but for your balls. Sure. And, uh, it, and I was like, what's this for? She goes, well, to, so that people don't see all the details. Yeah. And, uh, I said, well, all right, all right. I can, I can dig with that. So then I, I, we're shooting and uh, and Pudge is great. And we're having fun and we're we're talking and then they need to take a break. The director needs to talk some stuff. And and Pudge just goes into a catcher squat. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm looking at him and I'm like, dude, really? Like, just you just do that. <laughs> and he goes, oh, yeah, man, like playing golf at the at the mall, you know, waiting in line. Like, yeah, I just this is I'm a catcher, man. And I was like, well, I guess your, your knees are, are good. And he's like, yeah, yeah, uh, my knees are good. It's, it's great. And I'm like, and you didn't wear a modesty cup, huh? Oh, Pudge, Pudge was letting the boys eat, huh? Deep, deep in the squat. Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, honestly, you know, there's sometimes I just, I, we had a laugh beforehand because I was a little, uh, delayed because we were doing employee reviews, which on, is on the total other end of the spectrum of where I thought <laughs> not, this base, not an underwear ad. Where I thought this baseball world would bring me, but I'm <laughs> I'm happy that the baseball world uh, gave you that opportunity. You know that's pretty nuts, man. Literally, <laughs> it was. It he, was. Uh, it is, and everybody in the family is getting sacks for Christmas. <laughs> it's uh, some of the puns are too easy, huh? Yeah. Um, well, you know, as much as I want to talk Pudge Rodriguez's biscuit, biscuits with you, <laughs> I did want to talk a little free agent pitching. Now I'm looking at the picture of you and Pudge. Beebs, you might have to get that on the screen at some point because that's just... <laughs> I, I'll, save yeah, other, had to do. I'll save other questions till the end because, God, now I'm seeing the tie. Uh, I, <laughs> you know, I, I know you, you can... You're one of our... Probably our favorite talking baseball extended friend because man you're gonna hit some of the high-end knowledge stuff that we're not gonna get to but you also get the silly ridiculousness of baseball and doing it in your underwear that um i i wanted to focus on the pitching market because we've i was gonna say we've got the big dogs uh this free agency the hitters are tragic like i, I know that sounds rude but you know cody bellinger uh, after show hey so we have the unicorn Cody right. Bellinger is going to ring the bell, which is probably more de deserved than we're leading on. Like, the guy did do good things. He had an injury he could point to. He had a nice bounce back year. But, God, who, whatever team signs him is going to be very excited but extremely nervous. That The, the pitching is not that way. Um, <laughs> except it's kind of weird at the top because Nola's starting to get a ton of love because... Uh, he's going to be Aaron Nola, and Snell is just scary because he's his own outlier. Uh, so I, I guess, um, and then we've got our guy Yamamoto coming uh, coming across who he might get the biggest contract. So why don't we just, I think those are going to be the big three. You've got a, a guy who's going to win the Cy Young and is now going to be a two-time Cy Young pitcher, but his pitching style <laughs> has to be horrifying for some teams because he... Mm. He doesn't care about whip. You you are going to use your bullpen. I mean, yeah. Uh, Aaron Nola, uh, unfortunately, is kind of doing the free agency timing wrong, but he also has electric stuff. He showed it this postseason, and he's uh, he's going to eat innings. He's going to be out there. It's what you're looking for in a in a starting pitcher. Um, and then again, Shohei's kind of an outlier. So I. I guess between those two and Yamamoto, uh, what are you seeing as th those are kind of the big three of this free agency with <laughs> with Jordan Montgomery trying to sneak in at the end, but I, I think those three are, are the top. Yeah, uh, I you know this might surprise you. Uh, I think I take Nola. Okay, and my reasoning is this: I mean, Blake Snell, you know, 
every three years, you get two years of 120 innings and you get one of 180. That's just kind of what he's been like. And I, I think he's an excellent pitcher. Uh, but you know, the walks, the fifth inning stuff, you know, I, I could, I could see having some, some, some worries about him. Then Yamamoto, I like him, but you know, I like guys who they come over to Japan and you might get them on a good deal because there's that risk. So Kodai Senga comes over five years and 75. I love that deal yeah. because five and 75, he could just be like a kind of your fourth starter and you'd you'd still be fine with it. You know what I mean? It's not it's not gonna wreck your boat. Ended up being one of the best contracts from last free agency. Like if we had to do a follow up free agency <laughs> draft or something, I mean Sanga's seventy five, that's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh what, like runner up in the rookie of the year. Like yeah. it was great. But I don't know with Yamamoto, I just we, it's a different discussion when you're talking about like two hundred million. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? Like then you're like, well, I need to know he's good. You know what I mean? And I think he's good, but I don't know that I know he's good. And in fact, I, I have a stuff plus number. And, um, you know, in the WBC, Shota Imanaga, uh, the small lefty, uh, had a better stuff plus number. Now, that's not the be all and end all, but it's just interesting to me that he had a there's a, another free agent from Japan who might sign the five and 75. Right that I kind of like, you know, like he's <laughs> one of my, he's one of my, like, uh, okay. you know, makes my voice go up an octave apparently, um, uh, guys, but Nola, what I like about Nola is it's really good command. And I think one thing that has made him look worse than he's been, uh, over the last few years is, do you remember how bad this Phillies defense has been over oh, the yeah. last couple of years? My yeah. God, it used to be a joke. It used to be like it was one of the years was like the worst ever or something yeah. like it's been really it, bad. It, wasn't, that... it also wasn't because uh, me, Jim, Beebs, we'll we'll be the first to be like, hey, defensive stats, sometimes you got to tiptoe and sometimes it still doesn't pass the sniff test. The Phillies were the sniff test. It was like, yeah. is Schwarber, <laughs> Cassian, like you were looking around like, yeah, this shouldn't work. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Abandoned> <laughs> they have it defense. short before. They, they did cigarettes <laughs> short for a while. You're like, what's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, and then that ballpark, I know it didn't play that way really this year, but it's a it's a it's a hitter friendly ballpark. So uh, I I just see in him. There's two things that I like in longevity uh, for a pitcher is like multiple pitches, like a, a wider array of pitches. And he, I think he's like kind of a four pitch guy. I like command, you know, on a long scale. Like he's shown that he has command every year. So I believe he has command um, and then a, a plus breaking ball. Like, think about all the guys that have pitched further than you thought and have been better than you thought late into their careers. I think of, like, Wainwright. I think of, like, Rich Hill. How's Rich Hill still out here? No idea. At, like, 44? No idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> None. It's the breaking ball, I think. <laughs> it's like, if you have a great breaking ball, if you have a big old curveball that you can land, I think that that's, that can be, lead to longevity. So... Uh, Nola has that. So I, I think yeah. he's uh, a combination of safe with upside. And I, I like that if I'm going to have to put a lot of money down on the table. Safe with upside is the perfect phrasing. Like that's mm. a, as you, as you start to think of actual suitors. Um, Cause you know, we, uh, our guy, Jolly Olive for a little bit, it, no one can play Snell. Like, uh, you know, every free agency you come in, even Cody Bellinger, it's like, okay, you know, Cubs would make a ton of sense. Yankees would make a ton of sense. Even if that's Giants. The, the Giants move they've been waiting for, like, you can kind of list the three. For Snell, obviously every team could use a starting pitcher with his ability, but it it just starts to get scared. Like, he was throwing around the Red Sox for a little bit because there's a chance they're big-time players this free agency and they need starting pitching, but... If there's one ballpark I wouldn't want Snell at, it's kind of Fenway. Like if if you're gonna naturally be putting on two runners on oh, every other righties, inning, right? Right? Like that's it. It just feels like a bad form. So I I I love Snell. A his personality I think is just hilarious. He cracks me up. Snell in Yankee Stadium would be good. A lefty in Yankee Stadium would. Be Aaron good. Judge loves him, and him and Hal are kind of pulling the strings. So I'm that's it's in the back of my head, um, but. Uh, he he's gonna find a landing spot. I just have no idea where it is. Where Nola, on the other hand, kind of like what you were saying with Sang a little bit, like even if Nola 
you know, it's a it's a slow burn. Uh, but if you give him some better defense and he's not pitching in Philly, you know, if, if Aaron Nola becomes a reliable three to throw you 180, 200 innings, like that's extremely valuable. Um, I know. And also can pitch like a one in the postseason. Right. I mean, and he, he can turn it on and there right could there. be more there. So, um, do you have, uh, I guess we know who Snell is. A- any other kind of closing thoughts on Yamamoto? Like it's, yeah, he's 25, he's he's 5'10", he, he looks the part, but let's see. Uh, I, I mean, he has an impressive array of pitches too, So and, and he has command too. So uh, I, I'm just a little surprised that like Imanaga also outproduced him in terms of strikeouts and walks uh, in, in MPV last year. So the the Japanese numbers don't kind of line up to the hype for me. I don't. I don't okay. really understand it. There have been guys who've come over who've had better strikeout rates. You know, there have been guys who have come over who had better walk rates. You know, like he's he's pretty good, but I, I'm I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be it too much. Um, People. And uh, one thing that's going to be nice is I do think he'll be one of the um, he'll be on the earlier side because I think him and Nola are the you know the two guys who are going to get the most in the in the market, and I think that you know those guys like also Yamamoto. It's forty five days. So mm. once they once they announce it uh, this week, I think like they have 45 days and that's it. Um, and so there's a real limit on how long it can take. I looked up uh, Kodai Senga. He signed in mid-December. Uh, so I would ex- actually expect uh, Yamamoto to sign before the new year. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Nola does, too, because the market kind of wants to set the very top end. And uh, and then those middle guys fall in. So I would expect that like. Snell and Sonny Gray and Marcus Stroman are going to have to wait longer because they're also, you know, second options for teams that are like, right. if you know, I mean, we're looking at Nola. If we can't get Nola, then maybe we'll get Gray, you know, you know, it's like that sort of deal. So they have, they have to wait and those guys will take longer to, to sign. So I, I would expect Nola and Yamamoto to sign before New Year's. Yeah, Stroman and Gray are interesting. I mean, Sonny Gray had an incredible year, and he he's got a pretty incredible resume, like for for an MLB career. Uh, and I'm Stroman has a similar punch. He ends up getting hurt at the end. Uh, Fangraphs have them projected to get uh, basically both around three for sixty six, um, and it has Erod a tier above them, and then it kind of has Monty in the middle. Is that how you kind of view those guys? Yeah, I, I think they're all sort of in that sixty to eighty million dollar uh, grouping. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons that Snell may take some time is because is he going to try to get more than Gossman and Robbie Ray did? In some ways, like he has a better resume, right? right? I mean, he's coming off sides, like you know, he's he he didn't have the like real downturn like Robbie Ray like had some bad seasons in there. Yeah. And he, you know. he always had the strikeout numbers. So there, I think if you were a team, you were able to say like, oh, you know, pitch starting pitcher figures out control strikeouts, him and the bullpen coach in Toronto, weren't they like they were buddies. So you could talk yourself into the story where Snell, it's more like <laughs> if he's, if he's going to throw 180 innings, there's a chance he's going to win the Cy Young, which right. I don't know. He, uh, you could see he, he brings a weird smile to my face because he led the league in walks this year. He led the league in ERA. Um, and oh. when, when Trevor Plouffe used to go live on Instagram, he used to be in there. And in all caps, he'd just reply, Trevor Plouffe has swag. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's, uh, he's a plus individual. I mean, he let my, uh, he let my 12-year-old interview him. Uh, he has like his own minor league. He has his own like little league team yeah. up in, in Seattle. Like he loves kids. Uh, he also has a little bit of that sort of Tommy fam. He'll like, just say things that you're like, <laughs> that's on the record. All right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, he kind of, he doesn't care. He, well, yeah. I, he doesn't give a fuck. I'll, I'll say yeah, that, you it's know? different than not care. Right. Yeah, yeah. He, he cares, cares. About, about winning. Yeah. yeah. But he, <laughs> like, he doesn't give a fuck that you take that quote and run with it. <laughs> I game, I, I game, I pitch. Um, yeah, I, I guess for me, there's, I, Honestly, Jordan Montgomery, talk about timing free agency, right? I, I think mm-hmm. the, the MLB world kind of knows where Monty's at. And we're excited for him. He It's just weird times with the Yankees, which is now just becoming a trend with the Yankees. But there there was a time where he just every time right before he'd get pulled, he'd get knocked around. And then 
Eventually, the Yankees took his leash away kind of before that, that they were treating him like a 75-80 pitch pitcher. And then I know the Cardinals changed his fastball a little bit, right? That he's uh, he's thrown four-seamer. His usage a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I guess uh, getting a little more nitty-gritty because, I you know, Montgomery, Erod, Stroman, Sonny Gray, I, I think people kind of know what you're signing up for at this point. I think this starting pitching free agency – gets really exciting in the next tier because it's it's the game I love to play every year that if there was an expansion team or if a if the team really just cleared the books and said like let's build a free agent team between the next tier of free agents it feels like you could put together a starting five that I'd be like ooh like you know it uh, if you're if you're not getting one of the big guys obviously it wouldn't have the one two playoff punch you're looking at but as I look at the guys that are expected to get uh, two years, 30 and below, and this is Fangraph's numbers again, which I think they mm-hmm. come in low every year, so these will probably be higher. But, you know, if I could put together a staff that was Giolito, Lugo, Maeda, Jack Flaherty, Nick Martinez, Lorenzen, Kyle Gibbs, like, I don't know. Like, I, you could tell me that's an MLB pitching staff, and I'd be like, hey, if a couple of those guys click this year, we could put innings together. I, I guess in that range... And I don't know, maybe my Yankee bias is coming in, but I see Luis Severino, like Martin Perez, like uh, Frankie Montas, which I you can tell in the tone of my voice where we're at. Um, <laughs> but I, I guess as I was we, an octave lower, <laughs> <laughs> not, not that same uh, Imanaga excitement. Yeah, um, that I I guess when we start to get into that area, who are the guys that you're zooming in, either stuff plus wise or that teams are going to be looking at and being like, that's that's the guy we want. Kind of like how you said Stroman and Sonny are going to have to wait. Like, almost this tier of guys are going to have to wait for others to get placed. No, I actually think oh. this tier of guys will sign early, too. Mm, okay. Because they're going to get – Lugo is not. Lugo's going to get, like, a two-, three-year deal. So that's a little bit different. But a, a lot of the guys you mentioned are going to maybe get the 1-15 and 15 or the 1-12. and 12. Um I kind of feel like they're going to get very similar offers early on Mm. and their agent's going to be like, well, we got three offers, one in 14, one in 15, one in 15, and one in 15 with an option. So basically, where do you want to play? Yeah. You know, where Mm. do you want to pitch? Maybe I'm just saying this because the Giants seem to take advantage of that market every year. They're like, you know, hey, you need to bounce back. You need a You need a short term contract. Like we're here for you. Um, so I could see any one of these signing with the giants, but my favorite, uh, and I wrote, I wrote a piece about like my favorite undervalued, uh, free agents. And there were three former Yankees on it. Mm. <laughs> and mm. people, people are not happy about that. Oh, Frankenstein uh, noise. <laughs> yeah, but, ah. but see, I would not have made the Montas trade to get right. him, but now that I can just give him one million, one year and 10 million, he's more interesting to me. You know what I mean? Those yeah. are different things. So um, what my favorite is actually Luis Severino. Okay. Because I know he really stunk last year. I know it just, it wasn't good. But in terms of like Velo, he wasn't that far off. And in terms of like the shapes of his pitches and stuff, it like, I don't know why he stunk so bad. Like I, I feel like, it just was like one of those years getting hurt, kind of trying to come back, trying to like, maybe the command was a little off. I I would love to give that guy a shot because, you know, you got to, you still got a mid nineties fastball. You still got the hard slider and, you know, he's back at driveline this off season. And I would just, uh, I'd be like, yeah, for a year, I'd love to love to give that a ride. It's his change up too. used, used to be such a weapon. Yeah. It, it was bizarre. And I, and <laughs> it's funny because, you know, we we do a lot of stuff that doesn't involve intense research uh, <laughs> where you do that. I was just going to casually thrown out like, hey, have, have you done research about pitchers that try to jump in midseason that miss spring training? Because I, I don't know. We we saw Carlos Rodon this year and we, we saw, you know, mm. Severino. His first start was until May 21st. And he's a guy with an injury that 
I don't, there's something to that. It, there's something more to that than Paul O'Neill on the broadcast saying like, yeah, these guys are trying to jump on a moving train. It's like, well, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I've got, I've got, I've got one thing that's sure. interesting. Hitter behavior changes over the course of the season. Okay. And so at the beginning of the season, hitters swing less and are considered behind the pitchers, like trying to get their timing. And so pitchers do better in spring, partially because they're more ready for some reason, partially because they're they're just pitching the way they pitch and the hitters have not yet come to their approach. Like they're, mm. it's almost like that in the first inning of a game, you sometimes you'll take more pitches because you're trying to see what the guy has. And like the hitters as a whole do this thing where in April they swing less than other months. So, you know, maybe as a pitcher, if you're jumping right into like, oh, the hitters are like, it is that moving train thing almost. So yeah. it's like the hitters are like, oh, they're in there like May, June, they're ready to go. And I didn't get that like couple of starts at the beginning of the season mm. where it was like 45 degrees out and the hitters were just like, I don't want to foul a ball off. That yeah. hurts. <laughs> I love it. I I can make up some fake theories around that too. Yeah, I don't know because right. if, yeah. if if the pitchers are ahead, the hitters catch up, then the pitchers have to catch up again. Yeah. So if you're a pit, if you're a new pitcher and you don't get that second, I don't know. I I can I can BS a fake theory about that. Um, I could, I, it'd be interesting to to look into that further though. So so great, Montas and Sevi, great. Um, mm, who Montas have- is like you know. You only got you got like four outs that you got to see him, and you and you <laughs> got saw some of the velo, but he was in, as a reliever. So can I ask not... you a question? What was that? Was that the Yankees doing him a favor? Was that him just yeah, hustling probably. his ass off? Like what? How does that go down? That Frankie Montas comes back. Was it the last game of the year? Second to last uh, game. Of it the was year? in the last series, I think. Yeah, the the last series. That's agents. Is that front office? Like I, I don't. Just looking for an opinion or a guess, I guess. Well, I wonder if if the Yankees had to drop someone off the forty man or something to activate him or something, then maybe it would be much more of a of a um, favor than I thought. But it is. It's always better for a player to even get that one inning in. Right. That's like if they they have to prove to everybody that they could get back on the mound. You know, if a guy's coming back from TJ like Walker Bueller this offseason, it's always it's always better that he even makes it even if he doesn't make the playoff roster or whatever. It's always better that he pitches some innings than than not. So um, I think that they didn't have to cut probably for him. They didn't cut anybody or DFA anyone. Just they did some 60 man maneuvering. So, okay, good. Roster so it clean. didn't cost them anything. And, you know, it's you, you want to be known as a, as a good place to go. <laughs> Brian Cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're uh, we're we're, <laughs> we're trying new things, uh, which Yankee fans have attacking, asked for attacking our own players <laughs> in Yankee, public. Which Yankee fans have asked for. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's uh, it's so funny that each of those guys. You know, Yankee Yankee fan Yankees need starting pitching. Yankees need a lot of things. Um, you know, Severino still has a lot of heartstrings and good memories. But at, if the Yankees brought either of these guys on a one year deal, a if Frankie Montas were to get hurt uh, or be bad, Yankee fans oh my goodness. would actually would actually come for cash. Riot. Like there would be there would be an actual <laughs> news story, <laughs> like kind of the the Batman scene where it's like, hey, if you kill this guy. Um, I always bring it back to that. Um, and then Severino's just, if he came back and he was hurt or bad, that would just be a balloon deflating. Just like how, how do we I do mean, this? Thing? Bad time. This is what's, I think it's, it's, this is partially what's difficult about, you know, running the Yankees. I don't need to make excuses for him, but like they, and they've been, had a lot of success. It's just, you know, the stakes are higher to even make the roster. You know what I mean? Like yeah. every other team could be like, you know, oh, we signed Frankie and he's hurt and whatever, you know, <laughs> like we weren't yeah. like depending on him. It wasn't like every we didn't have like millions of people hanging on like every and like, oh, God, you know, fire far on. He signed Frankie Montas and he was hurt. Like, <laughs> I, I don't think it it doesn't work as as, as much that way in, in other markets. So sure does. Um, one thing I did notice that was really weird. Uh, so Lance Lynn and Jack Flaherty are not my favorite signs. OK. And they and they don't have a lot going for them, but I noticed their fastball 
is the right it's the right type of fastball for adding a sweeper hmm. um so you don't add you don't add a sweeper to guys who are over the top because it then you're kind of trying to ask them to be right. sideways and it's it's like different grips what you do is you ask guys who are kind of this way anyway to do a sweeper and um so i noticed that lance lynn threw five sweepers last year and uh that jack flaherty had a month where he was uh playing around the sweeper too so there's like a little part of me be like hey maybe if i sign these guys and they were they've had such a struggle bunny year last year maybe they'd be a little bit more open to like oh right. yeah let's try a sweeper and then all of a sudden you'd kind of have like a kind of a sinker sweeper situation with them where at least they could be really good against righties um both of them have seen their velocity drop. Both of them are coming off really bad seasons. Both of them are going to be really cheap if they, you know, Lynn could even, <laughs> could Lynn retire? I don't know. I was going to say, uh, if he's made some money, <laughs> you just have to tell Lance Lynn that it's a cutter and not a sweeper. I think if you tell yeah, exactly. Lance, if you tell yeah, Lance Lynn to throw a sweeper, he'll punch you right in the face. I'm <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> one of these and I get that vibe sliders. a little bit from Flaherty too. <laughs> he, you know, Flaherty grew up in the Adam Wainwright clubhouse and Adam Wainwright was not, I mean, he, he did a really good, uh, description of a sweeper. I was impressed with that on the, on the broadcast, but he's not a fan of, uh, technology. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, no, I I can't go too far in the broadcast. Then I small, <laughs> so I actually heard was better this year, but I was kind of live streaming, so I didn't really hear him. Um, uh-huh. and we might see a lot of Wainwright. I mean, straight to the booth, like playing and in the booth. We we might see a ton of Wayno the next forty years. Hmm. At least he's not as dour as Smoltz. I mean, Smoltz was my guy growing up, but I, I'm like, can you lighten up a little bit? It's please? just insane, man. It's a, now yeah. we're here. It's just I when when he. Like he'll literally say, like you know, I give me give me ninety on the black, then that ninety eight but wild, and it's like, come on, man, like that's, it's it's just it's not that easy. It's just you not- know what's weird too. Like growing up, like I was like, Smoltz is the guy. Like like I I grew up in Atlanta, and. I was like, Smoltz is the guy. Smoltz is my guy. I was like, you know, you get to the postseason. And in Atlanta, everything became about the postseason after a while. Because you're like, we're going to make the postseason. We're going to lose. That's what happens every year. And so I was like, well, when we get to the postseason, Tom Glavin needs to have the the umpire on his side. Right. Or he's, or he's terrible. Uh, and then I was like, Greg Maddox gets like an extra two ticks on his fastball and suddenly doesn't have the same like sort of outlandish command that he normally does. But Smoltz is out here throwing super hard in the postseason, blowing everybody away. He was a great postseason pitcher. And I was like, that's my guy right there. I even asked him about it. I was like, you were like, you were my like you were my guy in the postseason. He's like, yeah, because I could handle that extra the velo in the postseason. And he doesn't, and he was like a high four seam slider guy <laughs> that struck everybody out that didn't have as good as command as the other guys. Like the league became John Smoltz. Right. Right. And he's and he's super mad about it. He's like, why isn't the league Greg Maddox? And I'm like, I don't know, man. We couldn't find any Greg Maddoxes. Why are you so mad that we all became you? <laughs> what, is, what is that? And eight eight the A Rod bunting stuff? Like that's kind of the same. Like what what is that? The guys what, dude, like you didn't bunt? <laughs> stop over reflecting, uh or under reflecting. I don't know. I I don't know. Everything I've heard about Smoltz is he's he's just a dude. Like I you know, I yeah. I, I I like that. Like, I love that if I played around a round of golf with him, he would enjoy it's super kicking smart my about ass. Game, but yeah, the, the broadcast just bring me down sometimes. Yeah. It's a, that, that one line can just be kind of triggering. Um, how about, how about the other old dogs? I love that you gave Lance Lynn a, a shout out because I, uh, he hits, he hits a heartstring with Jimmy, just the gra- grabbing his nuts and here, here it comes at you. Like, uh, I don't know. Like you said, Lance, Throwback. Lance Lynn could retire and we wouldn't see him until there's a Cardinals 25 year, like reunion team or something, or he could be <laughs> pitching in playoff innings next year. And you wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I guess do any of the old dogs jump out to you, uh, you know, uh, I see reuse a free agent. He always hits a chord for me because when that changeup's working, he just embarrasses young hitters, and that's fun. But there's obviously injury risk to that. I, I guess Martin Perez. I, I don't really know uh, what happened with him this year, but the year before his cutter and his location was so good. I, I guess are are any of those guys jumping out 
more than the other? I, I, obviously, you already said something about Lance Lynn. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think uh, some of my favorites are Kyle Gibson and Wade Miley. And the reason is they're super boring. Yeah. And there's no real reason to kind of be like, oh, check these guys out. I like them. Except that they throw a fair amount of pitches. They have a good command. They kind of know who they are. And, you know, they, if you look at them, yeah, each of them has given you a great season in the last three years. It's really that dice roll that you were talking about earlier, where you're like, this is, but with them, I don't think it'll cost that much. So you just throw the dice and worst case scenario, he's your five starter. He's not in the playoff rotation, you know, and uh, best case scenario, he gives you some really valuable innings over the course of the season. And I, I've got, I think I've got one more unfair one for you because uh, Fangraphs they list, uh, they they crowdsource the the guesstimated contracts of guys, but at a certain point they stop because they can't do uh, every free agent because that just becomes mm -hmm. obnoxious. Uh, so I, I want to go off, I guess, off their board a little bit. If you're front office Eno Saris, and uh, you know. Brian Cashman brings you in. He says, I'm getting murdered. <laughs> I, need, I, I, need, I need a little bit of help. Um, it doesn't have to actually be the Yankees. Uh, mm. But, I, you know, guys who they currently don't have contracts next to, Domingo Herman, Matt Boyd, uh, Vince Velasquez, Luke Weaver, Julio Tehran, uh, Brad Keller, Carlos Carrasco, Chris Flexen, uh, and, you know, there's others, but I'll, I'll save everyone. Mm -hmm. When when you start getting into that range, like guys that, I don't know, could even be like one year for four. It, it could be a funky contract because they're they're at a different point of their career. Are are any of those uh, are any of those speaking to you? Um, it's a it's a tough group. Um, uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> Boyder uh, throws a, a lot of sliders. You, you could be, you could bet on some health there. Uh, Vince Velasquez, you know, has good underlying numbers, but he has good underlying numbers like every year, and not great overlying numbers, if that's a word. Yeah. Um, but uh, Velasquez, like you know, one thing he's done is like had some career, had some experience uh, starting and relieving. So one thing that's nice is that you have a second right. bite at the apple kind of if you sign him. You're like, okay, we're going to bring you in on a minor league deal or a one and three or something small. And we're going to give you the five, the fifth spot in the rotation. You know, if a kid comes up, you know, we'll at least have some history with you that you can go in the bullpen and theoretically should be better in the bullpen. So um, I, I kind of like that dual attack from Vince Velasquez. There's two chances that he's he's any good man he's uh, he's he's played a lot of major league baseball 2015 uh with the houston astros uh, going into his 10th season next year uh and for what it's worth he's actually the uh oh herman herman is projected for the most uh wins uh among a guy that doesn't have a contract uh thing there but vince is right there with him and then the other guy i really like is jacob junis OK. Um, and it's it's actually the same thing. And I think that, you know, the Rays did this and some people hate it. And uh, in San Francisco, they kind of did it some more and people hate it even more. But um, teams are, I think, thinking about the fifth uh, spot in the rotation and the middle of their bullpen, the back end of their bullpen in a different way now. And they're kind of being like, we're going to have a collection of guys there and some of them can throw two, three, four innings. You know, we don't know how it's going to work out. Maybe we'll have openers. Maybe we'll have bullpen games, but you know, Junius is going to be a bulk guy. Vince Velasquez is going to be a bulk guy. We've got a couple other guys in the back end of our bullpen that are starters that are just coming to the big leagues and we might take them two or three innings at a time. So there's, there's kind of this like, papering over the middle of the staff it's right. like the fifth we're just we need to buy some innings and if you if you sign jacob junis you're gonna buy 75 to 100 innings probably you know and you you don't have to be like oh he's our five starter right Full stop you just be like we assign pitcher jacob junis right and if we just figure out how to use these 75 innings best that's i it's one of those things you wonder if pitchers can find solace in that they're like hey you know 
if you can do that somewhat successfully, a hundred innings, teams will still pay for that. Um, and that's I I when we were interviewing Boone this year, and it was something I've I've been on for a little bit. They they haven't had a long reliever, and I I know that's a little bit old school baseball term, but it's also not <laughs> that it's useful. They, they haven't had a true long reliever. They had. You know, Chad Green was was their two inning guy. Mike King was, but they didn't have the guy that it was like, hey, we sixty five bullets today. Go go finish these three and a half innings in Kansas City, up eight or down eight, and I save the bullpen or maybe like would would Monty still be on the team if like you had somebody like that where you'd be like, okay, we're we're limiting Monty, but we we got the Jake Junis you know helper right after him so you know we could still get to the sixth or seventh you know yeah I, uh, I don't know i don't know i think unfortunately that's a lot more of a yankee problem than uh, a <laughs> but, Monty or yeah Jake but to Junis keep it more problem. general you know i talked to judas about this and he thought that it, it was a marketable skill now yeah. we'll see we'll see how marketable by what number he gets in the end yeah you know? that's like, true uh, but he thought it was a marketable skill i also talked to jeff samarja a lot wow. about um <laughs> I love that dude. I mean, that guy. He's a dude. He's oh, gotta he be a dude. A dude. He's a dude. He was such a dude. I, I asked him once. He he like went on this anti analytics uh, thing. Nice. Uh, and I was like, Yo, Jeff, we're we're cool, right? <laughs> uh, like you just went on a whole nerds thing. Yeah, this guy and, my thing. And he goes, and he's like, Yeah, but you're not like the other nerds. And I was like, Really? And he's like, Yeah, you've admitted you were wrong before. I was like, okay, well, that's a life lesson right there. I think. Um, but Jeff Samarja told me he 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 did all those reliever innings in Chicago when he came up, mm. and he said eighty five. He said eighty five. No matter how you try to massage me and like give me days off, right. and he said eighty five. Eighty five as a reliever is a lot. Yeah. And um, I, I remember back to the Scott Proctor days. Sure. And I looked, I'm going I'm to call it up here real quick because he had some oh. crazy seasons uh, with the with the Yanks. <laughs> Always comes back to the Yanks. 102 in relief yeah. and then 86 in relief the next year and then was broken. Yeah, Proctor, Tanyan Sturts. Uh. But, but I mean, that's 290 innings in relief in two years. And I don't know, in the modern game, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure it works so well. So... I don't know. Maybe you just buy 85 innings or 80 innings with with Jake Junis. I still think uh, those would be quality innings. BBD, I'm gonna I'm gonna old you real quick. Do you do you know? Do you remember Samarja at Notre Dame, or do you know Samarja at Notre Dame? I, I know about it. Can't say I watched. Dude, he was awesome. He was mm-hmm. nasty. He was like it was gonna be like an end of first, second round pick, like jump ball. He would go get it. Like I, he was one of the first athletes I remember. And, you know, I'm kind of a baseball guy at this point. When they said, like, oh, he's going baseball, I was like, no way. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, he's better at baseball than that? Um, wow. I mean, the- when I, one thing I did wonder, even when I was watching him as a tight end, he kind of looked like a wide receiver at tight end. Like, he was not he, – he's not like – he's not like Gronk. He's not like – thick like that. No, he was he's still – kind of tall. It was still a time in football that – like Notre Dame would split him out wide and like he he was acting as a wide receiver like in today's NFL very much like tight end but he was he's just a beast like yeah he was oh god does he does he live around you? like what's your guys what's your guys relationship you don't have to No I need to I need to reach out to him I would love to do a story with him yeah, I don't know. He was uh, he was uh, he was my guy that I just you know I get I get guys that I just go to when he was around here I just I always just went to him to talk. Like right now, it's like Alex Cobb, uh, Jake Junis, you know, Brent Rooker, just guys that I'm like, you know, what do you think about today? What a life. Uh, do you know? Um, it's a game we play on talking baseball sometimes. Career earnings for Samarja? Oh, I can probably do this. I'm going to go 190. 122. Ah, one twenty. He signed a hundred million dollar deal. I like, overdid the other years. Yeah, that. Uh, wow, he might have signed. The Cubs might have thrown you off here because his first two million, two million, two million, three million, three three. His he first didn't make five much years. in arbitration because they kept him in relief and stuff. But then he goes back to two six two six. So I, 
I got hurt if, in there somewhere. Maybe did they sign him to like a funky contract before? I don't, teams weren't really doing that. Um, yeah, I forget. Okay. I knew he got the 100 mil once. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, Jeff. Uh, I stumbled into one one last question. Who's who's going to be the guy on the hitter side this year? Uh, Belly and Jamer signed one-year contracts. They're coming back. They're, they're going to eat pretty good this free agency. If, if you had to bet on one of these guys to sign a one-year and come back, I mean, Flaherty and Giolito kind of seem like the easier options. Uh, I guess if you... Oh, if you were on the pitcher side. Yeah, if you were treating these as... as if these guys were stocks and you bought yeah. one now and next year, you're going to clean up. The bounce back one-year yeah. pillow, the pillow, pillow contract guys. Yes. Oh, there's going to be a lot of them. Think I mean, so? I think uh, Severino, uh, almost definitely. Montas, definitely. Uh, Paxton, if he gets a deal, I think even Sean Mania might need to prove it again. Yeah. Uh, G Lito for sure. I think Flaherty might only get a one year deal. Uh, I don't even know what Clevenger gets, uh, coming off of that. I think that might be a one year deal. Um, and you know, one thing that you were saying, like the market for pitchers looks better. I think this is kind of intentional from, um, from baseball ops side from the, just the way baseball works is like, Nobody really wants to sign anything but the very best ones to long-term deals. Just like we, how we've talked in this conversation about how, you know, oh yeah, Nola, why, why, why would I want to sign him to five, six years? You know, so there's gonna be like three guys maybe that sign five, six year deals, and then you're gonna have that like gray Stroman middle class, and they're gonna get two and three year deals, right? And then everybody else gets one, and that's why it looks like there's a lot of pitchers. Because they don't want to sign pitchers to long-term deals, you know. On the hitting side, anybody who was good enough, they kind of want to do what the Braves did and just lock them down, do those extensions, get you know, get out in front of this. And that's why Matt Chapman was our number two, you know, free agent hitter. Um, I mean, if you, I guess you got to count Otani, so then three, but you know, still, that's. Uh, that you know, it gets you're kind of surprised. Like I don't, I I don't think Candelario is a, a great free agent. I had him ranked like 25th or something, uh, but I think he went up in our ranks, our overall ranks, just because people were like, "What else is there?" Yeah, I'm. I've got a little bit of Yankees blinders on just because I'll kill for anything that can hit from the left side at a decent ability, and Candelario can do that. And I think he graded out okay at third last year, and he can play mm. first, too, if you need it. So Tigers were already playing on the first, though, some, so. Yeah. yeah that's part of why they let him go, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. I But, you know, the, the Yankees, back to the, and we keep going yeah, back. Yeah, you know. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Yankees have uh, some decent defenders, so getting somebody who is, like, more offensive first profile and a left-hander could really work. Yeah. Anyone who can hit, man. It was tough. You always to put watch. like Peraza in in the six if you're ahead or whatever, you know. Yeah, if they're actually like bad. It was tough to watch. <sighs> Sorry, got a little emotional. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I I I've got. Weren't they five hundred? <laughs> yeah. They, well, no, eighty-two and eighty. <laughs> please. Oh, it's two games over. Please. Right. The streak must goes have been on. real tough to watch. I know. I hey, don't get me wrong. I <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm watching over here in Oakland. Here's what I'll say. I think these have been some of the worst teams I've ever seen in my life. You know, I've come to the I've come to the <laughs> field in Oakland and just been like, there is nobody here. Like there, like yeah. I'm supposed to as a writer be like, oh, like maybe I can find the next you know Chapman and Olsen because I'm I'm kind of good with Olsen, you know, but. I'm, I'm before like Galoff came up. I was like, right, nah, yeah, <laughs> nah. There's, like, there's no. I I'm just gonna stand here and look at my phone for a while. So <laughs> hey, hey, I I realize that, and you're absolutely right. But also, Yankee fans still get the shit for being Yankee fans because we sign everyone and we win. Mm. We're not doing that. <laughs> so like, right, right. so I'm I'm sorry. And but let's let's at least do that. <laughs> let, yeah, like our. You know, it that's supposed to be the other part of the deal and not the the twenty seventh team and on base percentage, the twenty ninth team in batting average. Mm. The New York Yankees. What's what's going big for them? So Bellinger and Yamamoto? We talk ourselves into belly just because the the defense we can obviously use in center and left. Another lefty. Um, and hopefully I mean if he hits Contact anything like power anything like side. he did. 
I don't know. I've heard he's not like a New York guy, which that's become a popular topic in the past 24 hours slash 24 years. Um, I don't want to say we're getting into Soto or bus territory. What does that mean, though? What? Just like doesn't like media? That's possible. Um, I mean, I, I think if I'm being honest, like, sure, there's a media side to it that's got to suck. Um, dude, there's people that don't want to live in New York City normally, right? Like, how, how many people do you know that are like, oh, I could never live in New York City? Like, how, how many times I hear that when I'm just talking to someone? And I think it's a little yeah, BS, so. like, people adapt and you make it work. But I don't I know. If, it. if you were, these are, like, elite humans, right? Like, they're, you know, a athletic well, i hear it millions. i hear it a lot for san francisco you know i get i, yeah. I don't know if you were a pro athlete that had to play in new york city and you didn't want to be in new york city that would suck right yeah 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 i guess but I, I i just can't square i mean i also can't square for san francisco I've, I've lived in both places for long parts of my life and i i've loved both of them so i don't really understand it but uh yeah i think that sometimes things uh, gather uh, reputations that they don't deserve like like oh new york well you know what new york is it's a really big city that you could live in lots of different places like you could even live in one of these gated communities in jersey or whatever right. you, know, like you can live Half if you don't like the whole hubbub Bronx, you know you can a, a chunk of the guys where do don't the chunk of the guys not white is it white plains or like guys yeah plains. a lot of the guys drive their big trucks and they drive in white plains to the bronx like they don't where well, they have in... like a palatial estate yeah you know? so yeah, I, I think that part of it does get overlooked. I mean, that that would then lean to the media who it's, I don't know, we're, we're it's just more of them. One, one of there is that. I mean, I, I can attest to that. Just like when the when teams come on the road, I see how much they tra traveling media contingent yeah. is. And there are teams that there's lots of teams where there's zero or one person in there because I, I make my living really in the visitors clubhouse almost. Right. And so, you know, I, when I go into the visitors clubhouse and I'm like, oh, there's like one of you, two of you, <laughs> the yeah. Yankees, there's like eight of you. Yeah. I mean, we, it's a pretty big difference. At, at winter meetings, we got a good laugh last year because uh, Boone was having his first manager presser. And I mean, he circled, you know, layers of people next to him was Matt Quattraro uh, doing his, I think his, like, I'm, I'm the manager of the Royals. And it was just... <laughs> Like, people grabbing the seats at his area yeah, to yeah, turn to boonie. People were literally, yeah, got it got rude at a certain point. Um, he got like hit by a boom mic by accident yeah, going no. the other direction. Hey, sorry. <laughs> hey, get out of the way, dude. Um, yeah. It's all good. What uh, I, I guess what else do you got coming up, Bino? What what should the people be looking for? Well, we're working hard on behind the scenes on a Yankees piece. So okay, I I, I hope uh, I hope you guys like that. I think there's. I've just been asking all my contacts, you know, ever since the uh, the Boone analytics screen. One one thing I can let you in on that's just sort of surface level, but this is the direction this piece is going. It's like he's out here saying like, oh, we have this, one of the smaller analytics departments in, you know, the big leagues. What and was that? I'm just like. Smallest in the AL East. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> was that your tweet? Was, was no, I, I, I mean, Zach Scott, who used to be the, he was the DUI guy for the Mets. <laughs> uh, so he's got a new venture out. And so they tweeted out something where it's like, they've got a count, but the problem is that nobody, and I, and I had a thing uh, with Mark Craig, we did a piece on Cashman that was very uh, uh, praised him, you know, a lot. Um, a few years ago, we said that they had like the second biggest uh, uh, analytics department the, the problem is in the counting and how you count. Right. So mm. if you're talking like full time people in the R&D department with the title analyst, maybe he's right. But they also have. Astrophysicists in Australia, literally working on one little aspect, mm. you know, like work on bat to ball collisions and that's it. And nothing else. Just the when ha what happens when the bat hits the ball. Just look at that one moment in time, and nothing else. We're not going to show you anything we're doing. You're siloed into this, and we're going to pay you two million dollars this year to do that. You know what I mean? Like, so how do you count that person? Yeah, <laughs> and know. the Yankees do that. So I, I, in terms of like using resources on analytics, they're one of the top five teams, probably one of the top two teams in baseball. What was so. the, what was the name of the Padres Australian spy guy? Oh, 
Uh, oh, do you know? Do you know who I'm talking about? You're talking about. I've been talking with Padres people about that guy all year. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Don Tricker. Don Tricker. Uh, Don Tricker. Uh, I think mostly it's been like they've been asking me, "Yo, do you know who this guy is?" <laughs> that was um. <laughs> John Boy got I don't know who he is. John Boy got his favorite him. story. John Boy got his teeth on that information and he was he was gone. He we lost him. It was yeah. his day. We lost, oh, I saw that breakdown. That was a good we, one. We yeah. lost him. We lost it on the hunt for Don Tricker. Uh that's where I hope to be. Um Eno, thank you, man. Uh I, I appreciate this. Um always a pleasure. We'll uh I don't I don't think we'll be at winter meetings, sadly. <gasps> Um, I think we might be we might be sending a hive. I've I've got a wedding, and I um, I think John Boy's got two kids, and he's looking for air then, whenever he can. Find I have it. updates for you on. That, okay, but... so you you might oh, see he something. He only has he has three. <laughs> two, <laughs> two so yeah, far. Two. We'll see. Um, we'll see. I know no, about that's two. that's unfortunate. I would love to I hang know. out with you. I'll I'll find a, a reason to come to New York. I like that um, if I can, dude. If you uh, do if, a beer thing. Yes, uh, we'll do content and beer and spin all of it. Um, mm -hmm. Are you still doing beers? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm running 20 miles a week so that I can drink my beer. Yeah, let's yeah. go. It shows yeah. in that. Uh... And other half wants to do another beer, so. Okay, nice. let's go. All right. Yeah. Well, if there's anything we can ever do to help you, uh, you're the best. So thank you, Eno. All right, thanks for having me.